You! You're the only one left! By Azura, no! Please! Please don't kill me! I beg of you! Spare my life! Ah! This is the sordid tale of Oblivion's most deliciously evil quest, Who Done It, where the player stalks and eliminates all of the guests turning them on each other during a treasure hunt of greed gone awry, plus every hidden conversation and detail you may have missed. Returning to our contract giver, Ochiva, in Chaden Hall's Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary, the Argonian greets. So, are you ready to mingle with the doomed house guests? The contract is waiting. Doomed house guests? Pray tell, Ochiva. Do you like parties? Because you've been invited to one. Of course, you'll be killing all the other guests. Are you ready to attend? A killer party? Yes, I'm ready. Please tell me more. Splendid. You need to go to the city of Skingrad, to the large house known as Summit Mist Manor. There, you will meet up with five very unlucky guests. In order to receive your bonus, you must kill each guest secretly, one by one. If anyone sees you committing murder, the bonus is forfeit. The guests believe there is a chest of gold hidden in the house and have agreed to be locked inside until one of them finds it. In fact, the guests believe the key to the manor is inside the chest, and only by satisfying their greed will they be allowed to leave. Poor fools. There is, of course, no chest of gold. The guests will find no key. After you arrive, the doors will be locked behind you, as everyone expects. When all the guests lie dead, you will be free to leave. Now go. See the doorman at Summit Miss Manor. He will explain the rest. Have fun. The quest, Who Done It, is then added to our journal. If we speak to Ochiva about the contract with low disposition, she sneers. I take much joy in giving you this contract. With so many targets come so many opportunities to fail. The chance of you surviving is slim at best. We then pause to ask, this is the first time we've had multiple targets. How exactly are they related? Each guest at some point in the past wronged their mysterious host. Now he's hired us to exact his revenge. Ah, very clever. With our admittedly complex contract now underway, we seek the guidance of our fellow assassins, starting with Ochiva's hatchmate, Teniva. Why do you bother me? With low disposition, he taunts. You may be a killer, but are you an actor? I think not. The guests will discover your true identity, and you will never leave that house alive. Otherwise, Teniva... How do we make five people trapped in a house with us not suspect we are indeed the killer? Remember the pretenses under which the guests are there. They will be suspicious. You must be as effective an actor as you are a killer. It would be a good idea to talk to each guest and appeal to their good disposition. Remember, if they really like you, they may open up to you. You should dress appropriately. The Deceiver's Finery, your recent quest reward, would serve this purpose nicely. If you earned it, that is. A very nice nod to our recent reward and sage advice. We then head to the Southern Training Room to see the ever-practicing Breton, Antoinette Marie. Why do you insist on annoying me? With low disposition, she sulks. Why do you get to go to a party? It's not fair. I hope they discover the truth and kill you in your sleep. Otherwise, how does one lure multiple guests to their doom? Remember, you must make the other guests feel comfortable. Make them like you. Make them trust you. Then bathe in their blood. <laughs> I'll be seeing you then. Dark. We appreciate that about the Breton. 
We then seek out the wisdom of the vampire Vicente Valtieri, loitering in the northern living quarters. You are like a dark gift from the Night Mother herself. Please, tell me how I can help. I hope I can help. With low disposition, he morbidly wishes. So it's to be five against one, is it? The odds are against you. With any luck, you'll be dead within an hour. Otherwise, Vicente... How does an assassin mingle effectively in a party? The key to successfully completing this contract is effectively blending in with the other guests. So for Sithis' sake, do not wear your hood. Farewell, brother. No hood. Sensible. Especially in the hoity-toity streets of Skingrad. We then seek the ever-snacking orc Gogren grow Bolmog nearby. Yes, brother? What can old Gogron do for you? With low disposition, he scoffs. What's the matter? Five targets too much for you? If Vicente gave me that contract, I'd be home before supper. Otherwise, Gogron, I know you're too big to be sneaky, but how would you tackle a close quarters combat at a party? If you really plan on killing the guests one by one, make sure that when you strike, you strike hard. Don't want anyone running for help, do you? Later then. Make sure our blows are singular. Wise words indeed. And finally, by the far wall, we talk to the high elf, Talandril, sitting at the dining table. I find your very presence foul. Say what you will and then leave my sight. With low disposition, she retorts. You come to me for knowledge, for advice... I would sooner see you flounder in a pool of your own blood. Good luck, worm. Otherwise, Talandril, how would you dispose of guests in a confined area? Take your time with this one. Observe the other guests. Learn their schedules and behaviors. And strike each one when they're alone. Use your silver tongue. Try to befriend the guests, and then you may be able to lure them to their own dooms. <laughs> may your arrows always strike true. All roads, it seems, lead to befriending, luring, and murdering said guests unseen, and making sure they like us more than the next man or mer. We then take our leave of the Sanctuary and our quest updates reading. I must go to Summit Mist Manor in Skingrad, meet the other guests, and pretend I too have been invited by a mysterious unknown host. I must then kill all the other guests. I should start my mission by speaking with the doorman just outside the manor. We then arrive in Skingrad's East Gate, and it should be noted the weather will always be a thunderstorm when we arrive at Summit Mist Manor, thanks to scripting by the developers. Getting closer to the estate, we see a luxurious multi-story dwelling, clearly purchased or rented by the unknown contract giver, presumably a man of means and with a long memory for those who have wronged him. Approaching the entrance, the Nord doorman Fafnir due Beautifully intercepts us, greeting. So the last guest finally arrives. I'll tell you what I told all the others. You go in, I lock the door. You don't come out until it's over. Now I'll tell you what I didn't tell everyone else. We have the same mother, you and I. And she wants you to have this. It's the key to the house. I guess someone else has already told you the other details. Kill all the guests, then leave, right? Well, you better get in there. Time to mingle. Go, go, socialize. Talk to those fine people, and then plunge your knife into their throats when they ain't looking. <laughs> Our quest then updates reading. I have spoken with Fafnir the doorman, who appears to be a fellow member of the Dark Brotherhood. He has provided me with the key to Summit Mist Manor, which I am to use only after the guests lie dead. I should now proceed inside and meet the other guests. Before we take a deep dive into the manipulating and executing each guest undetected, as always, let's first take a brief look at what happens if we fail the contract 
and slaughter each guest. Stepping inside the manor and circumventing the introductory speech we'll save for our return, we immediately begin our slaughter. So here we all are. Certainly is a nice house. Or rather, use a frenzy spell to allow the guests to give in to their base urges and tear each other apart while we watch. Soon after, a pop-up reads, I have been detected. I must now complete the contract by killing everyone in Summit Mist Manor, but my bonus will be forfeit. Watch out! Watch out. Ah! Ah! It's not safe to be alone. I certainly don't want to be the third victim. Look out! Fall before out. me, Breton! Ah! I ah! We're then forced to intervene with the last man standing. Ah! Her quest and updates reading. All of the guests have been killed, but someone discovered I was the assassin. I must now return to the sanctuary and speak with Ochiva to finish out the contract. Unfortunately, I will receive no bonus. Returning to Ochiva in the Shaden Hall Sanctuary as directed, she does not try and hide a disappointment, saying, You managed to kill the five house guests, yes, but your inability to remain undetected will cost you. Your bonus for this contract is forfeit. I must admit I'm disappointed. This was an important contract and you stumbled through it like a drunk. Leave me now and think about your failure. If instead we not only aim to complete the contract as written, but also be as stringent as possible, showcasing each available outcome for every guest, as well as the plethora of hidden dialogue that varies based on their disposition throughout. As this is a complex undertaking, it is therefore prudent the video is broken down into easy to digest segments. The first being our introduction to each guest. Then we will explore based on their current disposition, their thoughts, feelings and relationships with each other and us. And finally showcase the multitude of the guests reactions to the unknown killer plaguing the manor as we sadistically play puppet master and systematically hunt them down one by one, or watch as they do it for us. Returning to the manor's entrance to initiate the quest as it was intended, we have a final word with the doorman, Fafnir, who ushers. What? Still here? Well, what are you waiting for? There's a party and you're the guest of honor. All I get to do is lock the damn door. You get to have all the fun. As we step inside Summit Mist Manor, we're intercepted by the nosy Breton, Matilda Petite, who greets. The sixth guest has finally arrived. Well, it's about time. Do you know how long we've been waiting? It seems like an age. Whoever invited us here must at least know us, don't you think? In any event... We're all stuck here together, so we might as well get acquainted. The rest of us have already traded introductions. I'm Matilda Petite. The others are Nels the Naughty, Neville, Devizi Dran, and Primo Antonius. Now, who might you be? Please, tell us a little bit about yourself. As always, we have the option to bask in her discomfort and simply say nothing. Yes, well... Anyway, now that we're all here, I guess we can start looking. I'd wish you good luck, but I wouldn't really mean it. Otherwise, we can begin our subtle manipulation saying, My baby is sick, and we are so poor. Oh, you poor dear. Well, this does make things difficult for me. I want to find the gold as much as anyone, but you need it so much more than I do. Though, it should be noted, this does not dissuade Matilda in her own greedy endeavour in the slightest. I have a good idea where that chest might be. That gold is as good as mine. And finally, we can truthfully share, I'm an assassin, hired to kill you. <laughs> You're a funny one. Good, I'm glad one of us has a sense of humour about all this. It'll make our time here that much more enjoyable. All right, then. I guess I'd better start looking. That gold's not going to find itself. 
Mathilde will then frantically begin searching the mansion for treasure, and consequently greet us when approached based on her current disposition, with a low one granting. Now you listen to me. I don't like you. Understand? So why don't we both just stay out of each other's way and be done with it? A neutral disposition garners. Have you spoken to the other guests yet? I suggest you get to know everyone. Who knows how long we'll be stuck in this house together. And finally, a high disposition presents us an early opportunity to separate her from others. Hello, dear. Listen, I've been thinking. Why don't we form a kind of alliance? If either one of us finds the chest of gold, we split it 50-50. With the two of us working together, we're sure to find the chest before anyone else. What do you say? Do you want to team up? We then have two options, the first of which will lead to another reply branch, if we choose to say, thanks, but I think I'll work by myself for now. All right, dearie, I understand. If you change your mind, just let me know. Or, uh, not really. Search anywhere. All right, that sounds like a fine idea. Oh, I just know you and I are going to find that gold. I have a sense about these things, you know. After which, nothing happens. Otherwise, we again can, to positive effect this time, choose to say nothing. Hmm, okay then. I guess I'll try looking down in the basement. Maybe you could search upstairs or something. However, to get Matilda right where we want her, we flirtatiously purr. Oh, Matilda, an alliance sounds perfect. Oh, wonderful. This is going to be such fun. So, any ideas where we should begin searching first? Try searching down in the basement. I'll meet you there. Oh, good idea. Maybe the chest is hidden under the floorboards. All right, I'll head down there and start looking. If we accept to work together with her, she will consequently greet us with... Oh, hello, sweetie. So, no luck yet in finding the gold, I gather. I've been looking as well, but haven't found so much as a clue. All right, then. I guess I'd better start looking. That gold's not going to find itself. Before continuing pulling at Matilde's strings for her own devious ends, we leave the Breton, safe and sound, away from the other guests to enjoy her fruitless plumbing of the basement. Surfacing on the ground floor to meet the other guests, we then overhear bickering between the Nord Barbarian and Redguard Knight break out on the second floor. So, Nord, if you find the gold, what will you spend it on? Wait, let me guess. A sleazy whore and a nice new battle axe, am I right? I'm going to open a tavern. Not that I'd welcome your patronage. No pigs allowed inside, you see. You legion types tend to stink up a place. A tavern? <laughs> Oh, I should have known. Leave it to a barbarian to spend an entire chest full of gold on beer and mead. How pathetic. You can call me a barbarian. It's true, and I'm proud of the fact. But you call me pathetic again, and I'm going to show you just how barbaric I am. With every word you speak, you're just proving me right, Nord. Your kind has contributed nothing to our empire, and never will. <laughs> My kind, as you like to call us, are plenty happy serving our own needs while your useless empire crumbles down around you. Your words border on treason, Nord, and I will not tolerate them. You will respect the empire. You will respect the memory of our dear emperor. Bah! Don't get your linens in a bunch. You have no authority in this house or anywhere else. You're not even in the Legion anymore. Nevertheless, I still serve the Empire in my heart and will not abide such talk. Walk away from me now, barbarian, or you'll regret your arrogance. I was done with you anyway. I can only talk to an ex-Legion pig for so long before my ears start bleeding. Besides, <laughs> I need a drink. <laughs> Once the argument has abated, we first approach the Nord, and provided no guests have been killed yet, he'll introduce himself, saying, 
Well, hello there. Nels is my name. Some call me naughty, but don't you believe it. <laughs> we then inquire, oh, really? What does a Nord have to do to earn the moniker naughty? <laughs> Shy of better Hagraven. Ah, don't let the name fool you. I had a bit too much mead a few years back, and there was this tavern wench. <laughs> anyway, just call me Nels. Any consequent greeting he will offer depends on his disposition towards us. With a low disposition of thirty or less, he'll be blunt. It's funny. I like just about everyone, but the very sight of you makes me sick. Why don't you go look for the gold someplace else, friend? With a disposition of thirty to sixty-nine, he'll reveal his plans should he find the supposed gold. I'll let you in on a little secret. If I find the chest of gold, I'm going to open a tavern. The Hoary Boar. It's been my dream since I was a boy. And finally, with the disposition of 70 or more, he'll discuss the gold in particular. Well, my friend, the search is on, eh? I wonder how much gold is actually in the chest. A thousand pieces of gold? Ten thousand? I guess it all depends on the size of the chest. The bigger, the better, of course. But where would our mysterious host have hidden such a thing? Having momentarily won over the confidence of the barbarian, we leave him to enjoy his chosen drinking spot to indulge, while we introduce ourselves to his newest enemy, the retired Imperial Knight, Neville. When we first meet him, he cordially greets. Ah yes, the sixth guest. I'm Neville. It's nice to make your acquaintance. So Neville, what's a Red Guard doing serving in Cyrodiil? I'm a Red Guard, though I've never actually been to Hammerfell. I was born here in Cyrodiil. My family has been in the Legion for three generations. Should we speak to him again, he will greet us depending on his disposition. A low one gets us. You're starting to crowd me, friend. Why don't you just back off, eh? With a normal disposition, he says. Well... That chest of gold is supposed to be in here somewhere. Though why someone would invite us all here just to give it away is quite the mystery. However, with high disposition, he'll keenly reveal his intentions and suspicions regarding our mysterious benefactor and the event. You want my honest opinion? This whole setup, the party, the chest of gold, it doesn't make any sense. Why would someone invite us here? Why would they just give away an entire chest of gold? If I didn't know better, I'd say this whole thing is a trap. So why am I here? Greed, my friend. I need the gold. I served the Legion proudly for 23 years, but pride doesn't put food on my table. I have a good idea where that chest might be. That gold is as good as mine. A keen insight from his many years of training, no doubt. Unfortunately... There's only one door out of here, and we have the key. We then move to find the so Dark Elf are. Commoner loitering Sir, about nice as house. if waiting for our arrival before she begins searching for treasure in which she greets. So, here we all are. It certainly is a nice house. Hello, I'm Dovesi. I'm very pleased to meet you. Now that you're here, we can really start looking for that chest of gold. What I mean to say is, before you arrived, we all just sort of glanced around a bit. Now that we're all officially here, we can look in earnest. We then ask, tell me more about yourself, Dovesi. Not much to tell about me, really. I'm from Morrowind originally, but my family moved to Valenwood a few years ago. Like the other guests, Dovesi will introduce herself differently depending on her disposition towards us. With low disposition, she'll say, It's funny. I don't even know you. And already I don't like you. With neutral disposition, she will instead remark. This is all so strange, isn't it? I don't know why I was invited to come here. But the gold could really help my family. I do hope I find it. Finally, on a higher disposition, she will greet us as such. You seem like a very nice person. I very much want to find the gold, but I wish you luck. May the best guest win. <laughs> All right, then. I guess I'd better start looking. That gold's not going to find itself. We then seek the final guest. 
the clearly well-to-do imperial noble Primo Antonius, openly agitated at having to wait her arrival. So, you finally showed up. It's about time. People of my station are not accustomed to waiting. Apologies, my lord. Forgive me. Antonius is not a name familiar to me, though clearly you are of high status. It's a regal name from a rather regal family. Indeed, my father owns more property than the East Empire Company. On subsequent encounters with low disposition, he will say. I was just beginning to think I had something in common with the other guests. And then you showed up. With neutral disposition, he responds. Well, here we all are. <laughs> it's funny how money can bring people together, don't you think? And finally, with high disposition. So... Are you ready to search for the chest of gold? I'm confident I'll find it. Not that I need the money, of course. My family is quite wealthy. Hmm? Oh, yes. Maybe we'll speak again later. And thus concludes our introduction to each guest. Now, as the guests engage in their futile search for the fictitious gold, we are free to further infiltrate their confidence and ferret out hidden prejudices and desires turning the guests against one another and simultaneously casting off any blame or suspicion before each is surreptitiously murdered to satisfy our contract terms and more importantly, the will of Sithis. We begin with the dark elf Dovesi, as it's easiest to work our way through the characters chronologically as the dialogue has been set up. As with all guests, Dovesi's commentary on the other guests also differs with disposition. And so, for clarity's sake, we will cycle through each, starting with low, medium, then ending on high disposition responses in a conversational manner. For example, with low disposition, It's funny. I don't even know you. And already I don't like you. What do you think of the old Breton? She's alright, I guess. Not that it's any business of yours. With neutral disposition, she seems to have a lot to say about you. Well, I really don't know her, but she seems like a very respectable old lady. And high disposition? Come on, we saw how she was looking at you up there from her high rock. Honestly, I don't think she likes me. It's because I'm a Dunmer. I heard her say something to Neville. And it wasn't very nice. Conversely, Matilda, what do you think of that Dunmer commoner loitering about? What about her? She's a dark elf, and that's bad enough. I may even like her less than you, if that's possible. <laughs> that's the one. The little dark elf. She seems a nice enough girl. But to be perfectly honest, I've never trusted their kind. Personally, I think she's a little floozy. She's been eyeing young Primo Antonius, probably smells his wealth. We then return to Dovesi and ask, How do you feel about that old Nord? It's none of your business how I feel about him. Really? We've seen him take quite the liking to you. Watch out. He's known to be naughty. I wonder what makes him so naughty. He seems nice enough to me. He does seem nice, especially with you. I wonder why that is. Every now and then he looks over at me and smiles. I think he's sweet on me. If Nels finds the gold, maybe he'll want some company. Well, it seems Dovesi's company may still go to the highest bidder. In response, we ask the Nord Nels what he thinks of the young and supple Dovesi. She's an innocent young girl, and she doesn't need people like you asking questions about her. Unexpected, he takes the moral high ground and refuses the bait, causing us to switch gears and say, Isn't she a lovely young lady? Dovisi is a sweet young lass. She reminds me of someone I knew. But perhaps we should talk about something else. Sorry. I can tell you're already looking out for her is all. I, I admire that. Let me confide something in you, my friend. Dovisi is the spinning image of my own daughter. Her skin is darker, of course, but that sweet face. My daughter was killed, you see. A few years back, by bandits. I'm sorry. Please forgive a father's heavy heart. Maybe that was the ale talking, but Nels, my friend, that was a mistake. Returning to Dovesi, we inquire, 
I haven't heard much from the retired Red Guard, have you? I really don't know anything about him, so you'd be better off asking someone else. I would, but they say the same. He's a very serious man, but I guess that's normal for a retired soldier. Ex-soldier of the Imperial Legion, no less. I know he's a retired soldier, but not just a soldier. He was an officer in the Imperial Legion. I hate the Legion and everything it stands for. When those soldiers came to Morrowind, they persecuted my people and stole our lands. Neville may not be in the Legion anymore, but who knows what atrocities he committed. We then see the Red Guard and say, Have you seen that young elf maiden around? She's a dark elf. What, you blind as well as dumb? That's the one. Dovesi Dran. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Why would she have any grievances with an upstanding Imperial citizen such as yourself? Oh yes, Dovesi Dran. She's a dark elf originally from Morrowind or so I hear. I get the sense she doesn't like me very much. When I was young, I spent some time stationed on Fort Moonmoth on their homeland of Morrowind. I have great respect for the Dunmer people. They are strong and noble and generally understand the importance of law and discipline. Unfortunately, Davizi doesn't seem to like me very much, but I don't blame her. The young ones tend to have problems with authority figures. Not just the young ones. Speaking to Dovesi about her rumored crush, we question. What are your feelings on the young noble Primo? I'm sorry, but my feelings for Primo are really none of your concern. No, you're right. He's just a handsome young noble who can't take his eyes off you. None of my business. He's very handsome. But please don't tell him I said so. <laughs> I've never seen a Dark Elf blush before. You know, you'd make quite a smart match, if you don't mind me saying so. It's pretty obvious that Primo comes from a wealthy family. He would never be interested in a girl like me, I'm afraid. Seeking confirmation, we then query Antonius. My feelings toward her are really none of your business. Excuse me, my lord. I couldn't help but notice your gaze finding that young Dark Elf. Do you know her, perhaps? She's quite beautiful, isn't she? A little young, perhaps, and not exactly highborn, but she possesses a unique elegance. I agree. And she's built like a thoroughbred, and just innocent enough for a young noble to educate her on the finer points of romance. Can I be honest with you, my friend? I find Dovisi captivating. She possesses a beauty beyond compare. Maybe you could do me a favor. If you speak with her, put in a good word for me, would you? I would be forever in your debt. In response to Dovesi's confession of her feelings towards Primo, we can then respond producing different outcomes. Pretty obvious that Primo comes from a wealthy family. He would never be interested in a girl like me, I'm afraid. Not true. He told me he likes you. He? He did? Oh my goodness, what should I do? Should I talk to him? Or maybe play hard to get? Or should I, you know... Or would that be too forward? Just do what you're doing now. Yeah? You think? Okay, I'll just try to calm down. Calm down, Dovesi. Calm down. I'll just take it slow. I can do that. Thanks again, dear friend. We can, as always, say nothing. Well, thanks for listening. I know I'm just being a silly little girl, but the heart wants what it wants, as they say. Or, oh, rather cruelly. <laughs> You're right. He's too good for you. But... but I thought you were my friend. How could you say such a horrible thing? Just leave me alone, you monster! Or again, say nothing. No opinion, huh? Maybe I'll just stay close to him for a bit. You know, hover about and see if he notices me. Maybe then we can talk. It's pretty obvious that Primo come. And finally, perhaps the most useful response to separate Dovesi from the other guests. You know, you should go to his room and wait for him there. Oh, you think so? I mean, it is rather forward, but I like it. All right, then. I'll wait for him in his room upstairs. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, yes. Maybe we'll speak again later. The Dunma Drand left occupied frothing over her new bow in his private quarters. We then turn our attention to the aging Breton, Matilda. Now you listen to me. I don't like you. Understand? So why don't we both just stay out of each other's way and be done with it? Matilda, what do you think of that naughty Nels? He reminds me of you. Uncultured, unwashed and generally uninteresting. He's a Nord. Mead-swilling barbarians, all of them. Oh, that man disgusts me. I find his entire manner offensive. Why, just before you got here, he told me the most off-colour joke about an Argonian maid. And here I thought he wasn't an avid reader. Nels, on the other hand, when we approach him, is not as open when we query. You seen much of that Breton bird since she's been clawing down in the basement? I ain't got much to say about the old lady, and even if I did, I wouldn't say it to you. Funny. She told me you two had already met. Had a fair bit to say about you, actually. Kind of stuck up, that one. Right before you got here, I told her the funniest joke about an Argonian maid, and she didn't even crack a smile. Maybe she should lift that old tail she's been dragging around, claiming she's an aristocrat. <laughs> you should have seen the old biddy trying to talk to young Primo Antonius. She may be a noble, but he looked down on her like a scullery maid. Returning to Matilda, we ask, Tell me, do you feel safer with Neville around? What do you care? He seems like a very respectable person. That's more than I can say for you. Exactly, yes. Respectable, law-abiding, to the letter. Strong shield arm. From what I gathered, he's a retired soldier. He's been all across the Empire fighting in various campaigns. Goodness, he's handsome. Handsome? Miss Petite. Have you ever visited Hammerfell, perchance? Well, if I can be perfectly honest with you, I find Neville quite attractive. Red guards are so exotic, don't you think? Without breaking her illusion and mentioning Neville was born and raised in Cyrodiil, we continue to play matchmaker for her own amusement. Seeing Neville, we say. You wouldn't guess who I just saw, Neville. Matilda. What's your interest in the old woman? You'd do well to keep your questions to yourself. Of course, of course. She just seemed to be so grounded, so full of sage wisdom with her standing and station and many, many years. Matilda seems like an upstanding citizen of the Empire. She respects the law and recognizes the Legion as Tamriel's greatest defense against evil. Well, she definitely respects a soldier at attention. What do you make of her background? If I may be honest... I feel a bit sorry for the old woman. She comes from a noble family, I'm sure, but seems a lot less well-off than she should be. Striking out on the Breton's behalf, we return to Matilde and question her about Primo, but she simply brushes off. That young man has more nobility in his pinky finger than you have in your entire body, you uncultured swine. He certainly is well-to-do. Just ask him. He's young, well-educated, and obviously full of himself. Not much different than any young nobleman, really. So, why is he here, then? It's obvious that young Primo comes from wealth. A chest full of gold would be mere spending change for him. Conversely, we say to Primo, I heard you had a little run-in with Petite. The old woman? I'd put her in the same class as you, actually. A peasant. That's the one. She said that you had quite a lot in common. Apparently, the poor old woman thinks she's from a well-to-do family. Truth is, I have servants with more nobility in their blood than her. And why would she think that? Speaking to Nels, we mention the fight we first heard when entering the mansion, but he interrupts. He's an Imperial Legion bulldog. Scum, if you ask me. Kind of like you. I'll be honest, we have had a very personal run-in with the Legion. A Adamus Philida, no less. They're all the same, don't you think? Bunch of pigs. Once an Imperial Legion bulldog, always an Imperial Legion bulldog. I've seen his kind before. He cares about laws and regulations, not people. I will confide something in you, my friend. I despise Neville and all his Imperial Legion ilk. 
They are useless, uncaring tools of corruption. Three years ago, my village in Skyrim was attacked by bandits. We went to the nearby Imperial Legion outpost, but they refused to help us. My dear sweet daughter Olga was killed that day. She was murdered, and the Legion would do nothing to help her. Neville and his kind are scum. We better stoke this fire while it's hot. When asking Neville about Nels, he dismisses. Why don't you and that barbarian climb back under your rock? Apologies, good sir. I meant no disrespect. Nels is a Nord, and like all Nords, he's a lawless barbarian with no respect for authority. <laughs> right. Those Nords will... I'll send your bloody soul straight to Sovngarde. Like there is such a place. You know what I think? I think they all are destined for a shallow hole in the ground. Know what I think? I think that barbarian will do anything to get his hands on the chest of gold. His kind are greedy and vicious. All of them. Trust me, I know. I was stationed at Fort Frostmoth for a few years on the Isle of Solstheim. Those Nords are a bunch of animal-worshipping savages. They're all the same, full of meat and something to prove. We lost a lot of good men up there. A lot of good men. Leaving Neville to further stew, we then focus in on the disgruntled Nord, and asking about Primo, he agitatedly states, He's somewhere around here. Why don't you stop wasting my time and go ask him yourself? Probably has a chest of gold tucked away for the ride home. Uh, seems like a nice enough kid. A little too rich for his own good, maybe, but I've met worse. Why do you believe he's here? Primo is young and rich. I can sense a good, decent person in there somewhere. He just has to get his priorities straight. Likewise, Primo is not fond of our line of questioning. He's a Nord. Even a complete idiot could see that. So what does that say about you? The general consensus is that he is the idiot. Big and loud and swilling mead. There's something about Nels I can't quite place. He's not for money, that's obvious, but I don't think he's quite the buffoon he seems either. What do you divine behind the buffoonery and grog-soaked garments, then? Nels is a drunk. He doesn't even try to hide that fact. But what else is he? When the liquor is dried, what remains of the man? I think Nels drinks to forget, maybe about some tragedy in his life. He plays the buffoon, but I sense a deep sadness in him. He's going to be very sad when he finds out how this party ends. Interestingly, if we seek out Neville to question him about Primo once more, his response varies based on our current sex. For male, he derides. He's young, rich, and handsome. Basically the complete opposite of you. And female. He's young, rich, and handsome. That's way out of your league, tramp. You seem to have a lot of reverence for bloodlines in particular. Must be the imperial pedigree. Primo's a blue blood, a noble through and through. He thinks he's better than most people, and in most cases, he's right. If he's so high and mighty, why does he deign to loiter here with a common rabble? I'll confess that I have no idea why Primo is here. The kid's got more wealth than the rest of us combined. He sure doesn't need a chest of gold. Maybe he's incredibly greedy, but I don't think so. My guess is that Primo is so bored, he simply has nothing better to do. Hmm? Oh yes, maybe we'll speak again later. On the flip side, when we ask Primo why he believes Neville is here, he counters. Why don't you go ask him yourself? Or maybe you're afraid. You should be. You're right. An ex-Imperial guard is still potentially a dangerous man. Potentially. He reminds me of the guards under my father's employ. Strict, no nonsense, and ready to fight at a moment's notice. Just quietly, I think his best years may be behind him. I know he's a retired Imperial Legion officer. Apparently, he's been in campaigns all across the Empire, from Skyrim to Morrowind. I also get the sense that he's very eager to find the gold. I can't imagine his life of servitude to the Empire left him with much to retire on. All right then, 
I guess I'd better start looking. That gold's not going to find itself. Now that we've learned of the dynamics of the guests' relationships with one another, a simple recap of their dispositions before we begin manipulating slash eliminating each systematically is as follows. Devesi is attracted to Primo, likes Nels, doesn't like Neville, and hates Matilda. Matilda likes Primo and Neville and dislikes Dovesi and Nels. Nels likes Dovesi, is neutral towards Primo, dislikes Matilda, and hates Neville. Neville likes Dovesi and Matilda, views Primo as bored, and hates Nels. Primo is attracted to Dovesi, is neutral towards Nels and Neville, and hates Matilda. In the next section, we will explore each of the guests' reaction to the three stages of their fellow partygoers being assassinated, as tensions escalate until the last man is left standing with us, the true assassin. For expediency's sake, we will save showing the murders of each guest we're interviewing until the final stage, focusing more on each survivor's psychological decline toward the player and the other guests during the ordeal. Again, in order, starting with... Once the first guest has been eliminated, we find Dovesi where we left her, loitering upstairs waiting for Primo, and will greet us according to her disposition. What kind of party is this? Someone has been murdered! A low disposition will have her say. I'm sorry, but I don't feel much like talking right now. Someone has been killed. Don't you even care? Or a neutral disposition. Are you all right? This murder has us all on edge, I know. I... I can't believe it's true. One of us is dead. And everyone else is convinced it was no accident. And a high one. Have you heard? Someone's been murdered. One of us. Why? Why would someone do this? The taking of a life is against every principle I hold dear. It's something I just can't understand. We can then respond with any of the following to better position Dran herself. Sweetie, you should get some rest. Yes. Yes, this whole thing has taken quite a bit out of me. I think I'll go to my room for a bit and get some sleep. Thanks for the talk. Or it'll all be over soon enough. Oh, I certainly hope so. I still want to find the gold, of course, but is it even worth it? I just want to go home. And as always, we can opt to say nothing. You know, that's what I like about you. You're such a good listener. Thanks. I feel so much better now. I think I'll head down to the basement and get something to eat. I think there's some cheese down there. We can then speak with Dovesi about the other guests again, assuming they're still alive, and depending on her disposition, she will have the following to say. Is that why someone invited us here? To kill us? This is horrible! Devesi, it's about Matilda. So what are you trying to tell me? That Matilda is the killer? Why are you trying to turn me against her? I just wanted to see what you thought. Well, she does seem genuinely upset that someone's been killed. Not that I'm ruling her out as a suspect, mind you. She has been so sweet, don't you think? I don't trust that old hag. She pretends she likes you and then stabs you in the back. Who knows? Maybe she'll really stab you in the back. For Nels the naughty, a low disposition will have her say. So you think Nels did it, do you? I would appreciate you keeping your opinions to yourself. You don't think Nels is capable of this? I don't know what to make of all this. But I'm not sure I see Nels as a murderer. Neither do I. He was barely conscious half the time. Well, it seemed that way. Do you think he could have done it? He comes across as something of a drunk. But you never can tell what someone is capable of. Devesi, when did you last see Neville? I'm sorry, but someone has been murdered. I really don't want to talk about Neville right now. Right. Being a soldier, he's probably investigating the crime scene. Does being a soldier make him a good person? Does it make him above murder? I hardly think so. You think he would do this? For what? The gold? I heard the others talking. 
Neville was a soldier for twenty years. He's used to killing, if you know what I'm saying. We then inquire about Primo, but are met with an incredulous... You can't possibly think that Primo had anything to do with the murder, do you? That's madness! You're right. That would be so... out of character. Primo seems kind of nice. I just can't imagine him killing anyone. I hope so. What are your feelings for him? I... I rather like Primo. He's not like the other boys I've known. He has class. He could never have killed anyone. You'd be smart to stay with the rest of the group. It's just not safe to go wandering off alone with a killer on the loose. After two guests have been eliminated, tensions are now rising, and it becomes more apparent that the supposed gold is now just a hoax, and every guest increasingly suspects each other. Devacy will now greet us with if she dislikes us. Two people dead, and you're still alive? I'm sorry, but you're starting to make me nervous. Please go away. If she's indifferent. Two of us have been murdered. One of us is a killer. But who? Two of us dead? Who would do this? And why? Is that why we're all here? To be killed like vermin? I feel like I'm going mad! Or if she likes us. I don't care about the gold anymore. I just want to get out of here. I'm going to try all the windows and doors and see if I can't get one open. Her thoughts on the other guest at this point are as follows. Okay, so I don't like Matilde. What makes you think I like you any better? You know how hostile Matilda has been. Perhaps, maybe there's more to her than she lets on, if you catch my drift. Could it be possible? Could an old lady be a murderer? She'd have the stomach for it of that, I'm sure. At first I thought she was just a cranky old crone. Now I'm beginning to think she's a cold-blooded killer. Vanell's the naughty. Look, I don't know who's responsible for this madness, so stop trying to taint my opinion of Nell's. Why does Nell seem so fixated on you? I just don't know what to make of Nell's anymore. He plays the bumbling drunkard, but he could very well be the killer. Can I be honest with you? Nell's won't stop looking at me. At first I was flattered, but now he's scaring me. He could be the killer. I could be next. When questioning about the retired soldier Neville... Two people are dead. Could he really have done it? I, I just don't know. I can tell you one thing. A trained Imperial Knight would have no trouble covering his tracks. Two people have been murdered, and neither of them was Neville. Watch your back around him. Neville is a trained killer. That fascist pig killed those people. I just know it. And again, she's defensive about the young Primo Antonius. Don't try to turn me against Primo. For all I know, you could be the killer. We're in this together. All we're trying to do is figuring out who is capable of murder. Before we're next. Two people lie dead. Primo could have done it, I know. He's young and strong. Still, I don't want to believe that. I hear you, but you said it yourself. You don't want to believe it. I know Primo could be the killer, but I just don't want to believe it's possible. If... if he likes me, he could take me away with him. Don't go far, it's too dangerous to go wandering around this house. With only two targets left, there are now only two possible suspects. The other guest, or us. Devacy will greet us with low disposition, saying... So many people dead. I just don't know who to trust anymore. No, no, you, you stay away from me. One of you is the killer, stay away from me. Or with neutral disposition. Only three of us left, only three. Where are you going? What are you doing? We need to keep our eyes on each other. And with high disposition. Only three of us left. I'm certainly no murderer and I know it's not you. That leaves one person. We must protect ourselves. Find weapons. Her thoughts on the other guests at this point have degraded as follows. Have you seen that shifty Breton? So you're telling me I should believe you? That Matilde is the killer? Why should I trust you? Get away from me! So you think the old quote-unquote noble spinster is harmless? I have no doubt that Matilde is capable of murder. 
But what about you? You're as much suspect in my eyes as she is. Me the suspect? Who of us openly hates Dunmar? Who claimed to be from wealth but is found out to be desperate for gold? Who mysteriously disappeared down in the basement before doing God's knows what since we first got here? It's her, you understand me? It's Matilde. She's the killer. She's the one doing this. We've got to kill her first. Do you understand me? With this morbid revelation, Devesi darts out of the room, disappearing in a veil of invisibility, and seeks to murder Matilda on the second floor, showcasing her formidable witch summoning and spells, and finally finding a blade conveniently left out before ending the Breton's life in a single swipe. So many people <gasps> dead. <gasps> When Devesi's approached, with only Nels the Naughty still alive. Either you or Nels is the killer. I can't trust either of you, so just stay away from me! What? Devesi? It's me. Please, just leave me alone. Either you or Nels is a murderer. I just don't know who to trust anymore. Listen for a second. Nels pretended to be drunk, but why was he watching you this entire time i don't think this was a crush at all what if he was plotting on us and you were the only one who caught him in his sick game it's nels he's the murderer we have to get him before he gets us do you understand what i'm saying we have to kill nels again dovesi becomes a blur and races down to find nels on the second floor we follow in tow and find the Dark Elf has all but vanished as the Nord exclaims. This house is a death trap. We're being killed off, one by one. We realize too late. She has melded into her surroundings and stalks her prey. Oh! Ending his life with a slash of her blade. Unlike the other guests, Dovesi has no such reservation about the Red Guard Neville. He's the killer, you idiot, can't you see? He murdered all of those people! Slow down. Neville? He's the killer! Don't you see? We have to protect ourselves! We'll be next! Shh. I think I hear him in the next room equipping his Imperial armor. What should we do? He killed them. All of those people. We... We have to get him before he gets us. We have to kill that murdering swine. Dovesi stops dead as Neville begins patrolling in his full uniform, following as he heads to the second floor. Leveraging her deadly spells to bypass his metal plating, the Dark Elf cooks the Red Guard inside his armor. Ah! You and I are the only ones left. But we did it. We survived. We... we won. And last but not least, if Primo is the only guest left, Dovesi, you don't have to trust me, but I need you to answer one thing. Why would a nobleman lock himself in a house to find gold he clearly doesn't need? He can't be the killer. He can't. I won't believe it. Get away from me. None of this makes sense. Is there even any gold? Please, no, Primo can't be the killer. But it's either him or you. I'm sorry, my dear. I really am. Oh, Azura, no, it's Primo. He's the only one left. He killed them, killed them all. We have to protect ourselves. We have to kill him first. Casting her signature invisibility spell, the Dark Elf swings a summoned axe at the confused noble. Ah! and then begins tracking him as he flees for his life. <clears throat> With her former crush now sprawled lifeless on the floor, we collect the gold off Primo's body, which we had spent greasing the wheels of his goodwill as we can with every guest, and as a final act of disrespect, we begin to strip Antonius's corpse of valuables, leaving him exposed and naked as Dran walks away in disgust. Before we look at eliminating the final guest, Provided Devesi is now the only target left alive, she will discuss the deceased guests throughout the quest. It should be noted her responses are the same regardless of how they die, even by her own hand, as all guests will canonically react as if they had no part in said murders. As we say, well, petite when kaput, you've got to be happy. I... I never trusted her, but I never wanted to see her dead. 
Have you no compassion at all? She wasn't exactly your biggest advocate. It's hard to believe she's dead. Why would someone want to murder an old woman? You really believe that? Before you were complaining about her casting aspersions about your race? Come on. What do you really think? Good. I'm glad she's dead. I can tell you that because we're friends. Matilde didn't like me just because I'm a Dunmer. She got what she deserved. If Nels the Naughty expires... Don't you even care that Nils is dead? Maybe you killed him! To be honest, I thought he was the killer, with how he wouldn't stop leering at you. The way he looked at me. It was flattering at first, and then... Oh, who could have done this? Why would anyone kill Nels? To be honest, it seemed like he may be the killer. He just wouldn't stop leering at you. To be honest, I started getting a bad feeling about Nels. But now he's dead. I... I should have gotten to know him better. Now it's too late. I heard what happened to Neville. You must be relieved. No, I didn't like the man. But why should you care? Please, just go away. Look, I'll go, but... I have to ask, did he talk to you about the gold's location at all? I... I don't understand. Who would kill him? And why? Is this about the gold? I think that Neville knew where the gold was and made the mistake of sharing it before he was... I'm gonna be honest. You having friction with him doesn't look great from the outside. Alright, so I didn't like Neville. But the man was a trained soldier. He knew how to handle himself. I who could possibly have killed him? Finally, Davesi's reaction to the young, handsome, and now dead Primo Antonius. Get away from me! You're the last person I want to talk to about Primo. I'm sorry to hear about Primo. You two seem close. I... I wanted to get to know him. Be his friend. Maybe... Maybe more. I can't believe he's gone. What do you mean, more? I thought you just wanted the gold and to leave like the rest of us, and it was just a big ploy to find out clues. Huh. Guess I read that one wrong. Primo was my chance. Do you understand me? He was wealthy. He could take me away someplace. Whoever did this will pay. If Dove sees our last target left standing, depending on her disposition and our actions... She may divine the murderer's true identity at the last minute and become hysterical. It's, it's you. You're the only one left. You did it. You killed them all. You. You're the only one left. By Azura, no. Please, please don't kill me. I beg of you, spare my life. Ah! Forcing us to openly fell the Dunma and fail the contract terms. Right! What's the matter? Getting tired? <laughs> Pilfering the gold ah! off her body we used to persuade her and sniggering at the single copy of a guide to skin grad she carried as her little tourist guide did nothing to prepare her for her eventual demise. Otherwise, remaining undetected until the end, with a low disposition, she will remark. So that's it. It's down to you and me. I know I'm no killer, so that means... Please, please help me. I don't want to die. I just want to go home. Go home. On a neutral disposition, and on a higher disposition... You and I are the only ones left, but we're not alone in this house. That killer is in here with us, hiding. But where? We must escape. Do you understand? We're the only two left. We're next. If we don't find a way out of here, we're going to die. John will then proceed frantically to search for a non-existent exit as we slip into our assassin's gear to stealthily end her life undetected. <laughs> Once a single guest has been eliminated, the atmosphere obviously changes, and so does the opinion of the Breton towards the other guests. 
finding Matilda where we previously sent her. Searching for treasure in vain down in the basement, Matilda will greet us according to her disposition. A low one grants. What do you want from me? For all I know, you could be the killer. A normal one. Oh, this is just horrible. Who could do such a thing? Who could kill a defenseless person in cold blood? Greed truly brings out the worst in people. And a high disposition. Please, sweetie, stay close to me. The killer might strike again, whoever he or she is. You'd be smart to stay with the rest of the group. It's just not safe to go wandering off alone with a killer on the loose. We can discuss the other guests again, and granted they're still alive, Matilda will have the following to say. Have you seen that dark elf? Someone has been brutally murdered, yet you want to question me about that little dark elf tramp? Go away, you fool! What are you saying? If you ask me, the dark elf is our killer. They're an evil and vengeful people, all of them. That little tramp is as guilty as sin, you hear me? She's the killer, and if we don't keep our eyes on her, she'll do it again. Speaking to Matilda about her favourite Nord nets. Even if I do think Nels is the killer, I wouldn't share my thoughts with the likes of you. Nels shared a few thoughts about you, you know. Seems you weren't fond of his, uh, humour. He's an obnoxious drunkard, I know, but I'm not sure if I see him as the murdering type. Well, he certainly has the power and the need for gold to fuel that mead consumption. He even said something about buying a tavern. You think Nels might be the killer? Well, he plays the buffoon, but it could all be an act. He is an Ord, and they're such a savage, uncivilized people. When discussing Neville. What? You don't think Neville is the killer, do you? That's absurd. He's a gentleman and a retired soldier, not a murderer. Exactly. A soldier of the Emperor's finest. Neville used to be a soldier. I'm sticking close to him. He makes me feel safe. Neville has a strong sense of justice, I can tell. If we find out who the killer is, he'll take care of things, if you know what I mean. We then ask, have you seen Primo Antonius? Someone turns up dead and you have nothing better to do than pester me about that fine young man? How truly pathetic you are. I'm just worried about him as all. A man of his standing caught in the middle of a scandal. Primo is a young man of refinement. This murder must be quite a shock for him. Right, but why would they target Primo? I worry about the boy. What if the killer is after money? Primo is quite wealthy. He could be the next victim. You'd be smart to stay with the rest of the group. It's just not safe to go wandering off alone with a killer on the loose. With tensions now rising, it becomes more apparent that the supposed gold is just a hoax, and everyone suspects each other more and more. Matilda's fear grows stronger and will now greet us if she dislikes us with... It's not safe to be alone. I certainly don't want to be the third victim. Two people are dead. And for all I know, you could be the killer. If she's indifferent. My goodness, two of us are now dead. What's going on in this place? Don't go far. It's too dangerous to go wandering around this house. And if she had warmed to us. I've been trying to figure out who our host might be. With two people dead... It almost seems like he set this party up just to kill us all. Speaking about Dove Cidran, once more elicits. She's a dark elf and a harlot. And for all I know, she's a murderer too. Now leave me be, you cretin. How could a lithe dark elf take out anybody? Isn't it obvious? Two of us have been murdered in cold blood, and that little tramp hasn't battered an eyelash. You figure it out. She seems so innocent. Don't trust her, sweetie. Not a thing she says. If she tries to get you alone anywhere, get away as fast as you can. She's a cold-blooded killer. When we question her about Nels the Naughty... Why are you trying to turn me against the Nord? Maybe you did, and you're just trying to cover your tracks. I'm just trying to figure out what the hell is going on, and I'd wager that Nord is stronger than the rest of us combined. Well, the list of suspects is certainly getting smaller... I don't think the swine had it in him, but now I'm not so sure. Two people dead, yet Nell still lives. I don't think that's a coincidence. Nords are savages, born to kill. 
I just know he did it. I thought you were looking for Neville. Have you seen him? You're trying to turn me against him, aren't you? Just leave me alone. What? Not at all. I was just making sure that you were safe down here. I just don't know what to think anymore, or who to trust. Neville seems like such a decent man, but how can I know for sure? He hasn't checked on you? Odd. Do do you think he could have done it? I mean, he, he is a retired soldier. He's killed before. Oh dear, this can't be happening. And for Primo? Two people lie dead. And all you can do is question me about that sweet boy. I'm beginning to think something is seriously wrong with you. The poor lad is handling all of this better than I expected. It's a testament to his noble bearing, I'm sure. If I may confide in you, dear friend, I'm very worried about the poor boy. The trauma of murders, it could scar him for life. He deserves better. Don't go far. It's too dangerous to go wandering around this house. With only two targets left, there are now only two possible suspects. The other guest, or us, and Matilda's fear has grown tremendously, and we realise she has backed herself into the basement's southeast corner, edging ever closer to the great axe on the ground. She'll then greet us with low disposition with... This house is a death trap. We're being killed off one by one. <gasps> oh! Oh, it's you. What do you want? Why are you looking at me that way? This is insane. We're being hunted down one by one. There must be a way out of this madhouse. With a neutral disposition? <gasps> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I my nerves. I, I just want to get out of here. Three people have been murdered. I'm so very frightened. And with a high disposition. <gasps> oh, thank goodness it's you, sweetie. Please don't wander too far away. I feel safe with you. Where are you going? What are you doing? We need to keep our eyes on each other. If approached again with only Dovacy still alive. You bloody half-wit. Do I have to spell it out for you? She's a killer! A murderer! I didn't want to say anything earlier, but I'm pretty certain I saw her casting a charm spell on Primo. She could be a witch. I knew it. It's her. That dark elf tramp killed them all. We've got to get out of this place. What should we do? It's up to us now, don't you see? Davisi did it. She murdered everyone. And now she wants to murder us too. We have to get her first. Matilda, in a frenzy, will then attempt to fell the Dark Elf, though for all her bluster, she makes more of a casual victim than anything. Whoa! So that's it. It's down to you and me. I know I'm no killer, so that means... Attempting to incriminate Nels the Naughty. My feelings about the Nord are my own business. Leave me be. How did the Nord go from drunk to stone cold sober since the other guests have perished? You and Nels? Both still alive? One of you is a cold blooded killer. I. I never did trust that Nord. Oh no. I just realised. The Dorman was a Nord. They must be in cahoots locking us down here. For their twisted, barbaristic delight. Oh, please, save me. Save me from that savage. He'll kill me and then feast on my flesh. That's what Nords do. Please, I don't want to die. Nels, seated across from Petite, tries to assuage the Breton's fears before drinking deeply from his mug. So many people dead. I just don't know who to trust anymore. Matilda will then continue to flitter about as we are then forced to take care of the inevitable ourselves. This house is a death trap. We're being killed off one by one. And after planting the seeds of doubt about her white knight Neville, she will then say... <gasps> oh, oh, it's you. What do you want? Why are you looking at me that way? You want me to mistrust him, don't you? You want to turn me against him. 
Maybe... Maybe you're the murderer. Maybe. Or maybe you've been attacking like a trapdoor spider from down in that basement. I'm no murderer. So that means it's either you or Neville. Just stay away from me. I don't trust either one of you. Come on. I've been down here with you. If I was a killer, wouldn't I have done it already? I know you're no killer. That means it's Neville. Oh, I'm so frightened. Please, protect me from him. Where are you going? What are you doing? We need to keep our eyes on each other. Again, Matilda will not seek out Neville, but rather smartly cower at the dining table to enjoy her final sweet rolls as we hunt down the Red Guard, who's looking to don his armour and end his life before he gets wise to our plan. This house is a death trap. We're being killed off one by one. This house is a death trap. We're being killed off one by one. And finally, Primo Antonius. You, you're trying to turn me against that sweet boy. Make me think he's the murderer. Get away from me, you fiend. Stop, Matilda. Tell me what happened. There are only three of us left. All those people dead. And the killer had to be either Primo or you. I'll be honest. I'm starting to question if he's a noble at all or... What if... What if this is a ploy... And he was a skilled assassin in disguise, wearing his regal airs about him. Oh, my heavens. Primo must be the killer. I... I never thought it could be him. Please, please, you've got to protect me from him. Matilde, seemingly still in disbelief, will converse with Primo a final time, perhaps to keep up appearances, before leaving us to break the young noble's neck. So many people dead. I just don't know who to trust anymore. This house is a death trap. Ah! Being oh! Provided Matilda's not the only target left alive, she will oh, discuss yeah. the deceased guest throughout the quest, starting with Dovesi Dran. Tilly, that poor dark elf girl, she's dead. So she's dead. What do you want from me? Flowers? A eulogy? I think not. No, you didn't like her, but she was murdered. Yes, the poor girl is dead. What a shame. Well, I guess she won't be finding the gold. <laughs> oh, Matilda. I knew it was the gold you were after. But even at the cost of an innocent myrrh? One less dark elf in the world. And now there's one less person to find the gold as well. It's a good day, don't you think? Or Nels the Naughty. He was a buffoon, but I didn't wish him dead, you cold-hearted villain. Well, you weren't such a fan yourself. All right, so I didn't care much for the man. That doesn't mean I wanted him dead. You know, it didn't seem like you enjoyed sharing space with that savage all that much. So, Nels is dead. I don't condone murder, of course, but I can't say he'll be missed. As a rule, I find Nords rather... vulgar. Matilda then lashes out over the passing of Neville. He's dead, and one of you killed him. I hate you all. I'm sorry. I know that you thought highly of him. I... I can't believe he's dead. Such a strong, handsome man. And a knight, sworn guardian of Cyrodiil, no less. Even in retirement. Why would one of us kill Neville? What if they try to get the rest of us? You'll protect me, won't you? And finally, young Primo Antonius. Leave me alone, you ghoul. Can't you see I'm mourning for that poor sweet boy? I know you were like a mentor to the boy. He was so young, so innocent. That boy was destined for greatness. Who could have done such a thing? If there is one thing to take comfort in, Primo respected above all else your shared nobility, and saw kinship in it. I just can't believe he's dead. He was like a young, beautiful prince. I hope whoever did this can live with themselves. If Matilda is our last target left, however, her fear will come to a climax, and she'll refuse to talk save a single final line of dialogue. So that's it. 
It's down to you and me. I know I'm no killer, so that means... Uh, oh, they're dead. All of them dead. Why? What's going on here? We need to get out of this place. Once again, her disposition will affect the way she greets us. A high one will net us. You and I are the only ones left, but we're not alone in this house. That killer is in here with us hiding. We've got to get out of here. You understand me? We're the only ones left. We need to find a way out of this house. Come on! However, with a low disposition, Tilly will assume we're the killer and will defend herself from us. Oh, they're dead. All dead. And you, you're the only one left. It's you. Oh, gracious, no. Stay away from me. The Breton will then remember the location of the axe in the basement. Yeah. Swinging its formidable heft in between battle cries. Uh, I fought mud crabs more <laughs> fiercer than you. Ah! Oh, uh, you'll never take me down. Until we shove our shiv, suffer thorn between Die. her ribs, sending yeah. her sprawling. Ah! We then collect 530 gold off her body, much of which we use to bribe her, and her green garments leaving her carcass exposed for the rats as we meander out of the basement to find our next victim, the Nord affectionately known as Nels the Naughty. Once a guest has been eliminated, the atmosphere obviously changes and so do the opinions of each guest. Nels will greet us according to his disposition, a low one will grant. What kind of party is this? Someone has been murdered. Someone has been killed. I don't suppose you know anything about that now, do you? A normal one? Someone's been murdered. By Ismir's beard. I need a drink. And a high disposition. Have you heard, my friend? One of our fellow guests has been murdered. This bodes ill for our stay and our search for the gold. Assuming the person we wish to discuss still lives... Nels will have the following to say. Nels, I wanted to talk to you about Dovesi. You want to talk to me about Dovesi? Someone's been murdered, you idiot. There are more important matters to discuss right now. I'm worried about her. She was sobbing in the corner last time I saw her. The poor lass looks upset. But if she's anything like my daughter, she is tougher than she looks. She'll be all right. All right? What about the supposed killer in our midst? Let me tell you something. If anyone thinks they're going to hurt that poor dark elf girl, they're going to have to get through me first. Hey, have you seen the old Breton? Or has she scurried back into the basement again? Can't this wait, huh? Someone's been murdered, and I've got better things to do than gossip about an old woman. The old biddy seems flustered about the murder. But who isn't, right? Did she seem okay to you? It seems she's upset about the murder, but there's something else. It's almost like she's glad there's less competition for the gold. Greedy old bat. One of us has been murdered, and there's no legionary in sight. Right now, I'm more concerned with a person who's been left for dead in this very house. Not with that legion dog. Legion or not, he could be an asset if things go sideways. He's like everyone else in the Imperial Legion. Someone needs help, someone is getting killed, and they're nowhere to be found. Worthless. I really have to wonder where Neville was when someone was getting slaughtered just a few rooms away. Maybe he was busy looking for the chest of gold. Or maybe he was right next to the victim with his hand on the hilt of a dagger. Think about it. Sir. What's your read on Primo? It's really none of your business what I think about him, now is it? No, but I am saying it is not normal for a nobleman to be in the midst of a murder. I can't imagine someone like Primo has seen much death and suffering. This murder must be quite a shock to him. Shock to him and the rest of us? Whoever the killer is will have to be strong and quick. Now, I'm not saying Primo is our murderer, but you have to admit it's at least possible. You'd be smart to stay with the rest of the group. It's just not safe to go wandering off alone with a killer on the loose. Tension now rising. 
Everyone suspects each other more and more, and the Nord, it seems, is more astute than he first let on. Nels will now greet if he dislikes us. It's not safe to be alone. I certainly don't want to be the third victim. Well, look at you. Two people have been horribly murdered, and your right is rain. Strikes me as odd, that does. Or with a normal disposition. Two people dead. If anyone else drops, I swear I'm going to gather every drop of alcohol in this house and drink myself into a stupor. Or if he is fond of us. I haven't seen death like this in a long, long time. It's a bit more than my nerves can handle, I'm afraid. I plan to gather up every drop of drink in this house and keep it to myself. If things get any worse around here, I find comfort there, you see. Oh look, two of us missing and your favorite dark elf is fine. Who would have thought? Two people are dead, you pathetic little worm. Take your gossip mongering someplace else. Sorry, it's it's an off-color joke. <sighs> it's gotta be the nerves. Not that hers are probably any better. She's frightened, of course. No one that young should be exposed to such horrors. So far, the killer has claimed two victims. If they plan on adding Duvisi to that list, they can think again. I won't let any harm come to that girl. Hey, Nels, you seen that old goat? Still looking for that wheel of cheese, I bet. You know compassion? There are two bloody corpses lying in this place, and all you can do is question me about that old woman? Come on. Two people dead and Matilde looks more rattled than a baby's toy. Yeah, she looks pretty shaken, doesn't she? I can't tell if it's genuine fear or just really good acting. She's as much of a suspect as anyone, don't forget. Suspect? What are you saying? I'll be honest, friend. I don't know what to think about Matilda. Yeah, she seems frightened, but she's also still alive. Why wasn't she killed? She may look old and weak, but that's never stopped a murderer before, has it? Don't doubt for a second that she couldn't be the killer. You know Neville, sorry, that Legion dog, said something about donning that armor of his. I wonder if he'll help in battle. By your smears, dragon blood, what's wrong with you? Two people are dead. It's hardly the time to chat about that Legion lackey. I tell you what, this is one of the only times that that armor would be a welcome sight. Two of us killed, and where was the stalwart legionnaire? That's what I'd like to know. He spent his life protecting the citizens of Tamriel? Ha! With two of us now dead, it seems like the others are looking for Neville for protection. The fools. He'll kill them like he did the others. That's right. I think Neville is the murderer. I can't prove it yet, but he'll slip up just you wait. Whatever you do, don't turn your back on him. I'm still trying to figure out why is the noble boy here again? It's certainly not the gold. I'm not sure if you're really concerned for the kid or trying to convince me he's a murderer. Either way, I ain't listening. Fine. Plug your ears and drink to Yusimir's beard, whatever you Nords do. Or maybe think for a second about why Primo is actually here. I'm not sure what to think of the kid anymore. All I know is that two of the guests have been murdered, and he's just dandy. Makes you wonder. Yeah, I can't make heads or tails of it. Let me ask you something, friend. Why is Primo even here? The rest of us need the money, but his family is wealthy beyond measure. Maybe he was bored... Or maybe he just wanted to do some slumming. Or maybe he's a trained assassin hired to kill us all, one by one. Sound crazy? Well, these are crazy times, my friend. Stay safe, if that's even possible. With only two targets left, no matter how innocent we try and seem, Nell sees more and more through our facade. With a low disposition, he will greet us with... You're enjoying all this, aren't you? You like seeing a squirm. What in blazes is going on here? Do you have something to do with this? This house is a death trap. We're being killed off, one by one. After ending the conversation, he will look for a drink. Well, eight to be exact, as indicated by the game files, and the behavior being described as quote-unquote stupor, 
and refused to talk to us during this behavior. Please, not now. I just want to be by myself for a bit. Or with a neutral disposition. Three people. Murdered. I know I shouldn't go wandering off alone right now, but for the love of Ismir, I need a drink. I need to find some real spirits. I think I saw some mead down in the basement. I don't care if it's not safe. It's my nerves. I need to calm down. Nels, in fact, does not head to the basement, but instead takes up drinking his hoarded liquor. Or, with a higher disposition, he opens up further. My friend, please stay safe. Three of us have been murdered. Besides you and me, there's only one guest left, if you know what I'm saying. I've seen death like this before. Many years ago, my daughter was murdered by bandits who came to our village. I'm... I'm sorry. I... I need a drink. Plonking himself at the dining table, Nels will begin to open up to us further. So many people dead. I just don't know who to trust anymore. Unfortunately, if the only other victim is the Dark Elf, and we say, Nels... We need to find out who did this. It's not you, and it's not me. You need to consider Dovasi as a threat. She isn't your dead daughter, friend. The sooner that you accept that, the better. Only three of us left, and one of us is a murderer. You expect me to believe it's that sweet girl, you murdering scum? I'll kill you. We instantly will be detected and forced to contend with the Nord as he finds the closest blade on the nearby bookshelf for a drunken duel. Showing your face was the last mistake you'll ever make. Yeah. Stay away! Otherwise, with neutral disposition. She's afraid for her life, as we should be. There's someone else in this house, my friend. Someone hiding somewhere, killing us off one by one. I swear to you, my friend, if anyone tries to harm that sweet girl, I will tear them limb from limb. Whoever killed the others will strike again. They're getting into this house somehow, which means there must be a way out as well. We need to find the secret exit and escape this madhouse. Unable or unwilling to believe that Dovasi or we are the killer, Nels will then look to escape the house. But first, he starts to rummage around to find himself a beverage or seven. When it comes to the Breton, with a low disposition, he says. What? You think the old woman is the killer? Is that it? Is that what you'd have me believe? Trying to cover your tracks? Believe what you want, but more people keep dying and for some reason she seems fine. She's either a frightened old woman or a cold-blooded killer. I don't know whether I should comfort her or hit her over the head with a rock. That old hag would step over her own grandmother if she thought there was a spot of gold involved. Actually, no, she's probably going to be the grandmother, but still. There are only three of us left. You and I are no killers, so that leaves the old woman. Don't be fooled by her appearance. Matilda is no weakling. She killed the others in cold blood, and she'll try to kill us next. I'm not about to stand around waiting to die. We need to kill Matilda. So many people dead. I just don't know who to trust anymore. After which, the Nord locates the blade conspicuously left on the nearby bookshelf and has a stern conversation with the old Breton, pointy end first. This house is yeah. a death- oh. If we mention Neville with a low disposition. Three guests have been slaughtered, and you want to ask me about that Legion dog? I don't know who I hate more, you or him. Guests are dropping like flies around here, but not Neville. He's still in one piece. That tells me he's either very lucky or a cold-blooded killer. Remember what you told us about your daughter? You think that's a coincidence? Neville is a legion dog through and through who holds life cheaply. You know what they say, a rabid cur is best put down. 
That sniveling Legion dog must die. Do you understand me? He's the murderer. He killed all those people. He must pay for what he's done. After Nels finds his sidearm, he then swiftly rushes up to the second floor and finds Neville struggling with his locked chest, holding his precious armor, and is promptly felled before he can raise his arms to defend himself. You and I are the only ones left. But we did it. We survived. We... We won. If we approach Nels about Primo with low affinity... By a smear, you've got nerve. Three people are dead. What, are you trying to turn me against Primo now? Turn nothing. Primo is the one seemingly unaffected by all this death and destruction. This is madness. There are now only three of us left. Myself, you, and Primo. I know I'm not the killer. But what about Primo? What about you? I'm not the rich braggart who has a grin ear to ear while partygoers drop around us like cliff racers. Besides you and me, he's the only one left. By Ismir, that boy will pay for what he's done. Come, we must kill Primo before he kills us. With his preferred sword in hand, the Nord darts after the boy, performing a leaping backslash that would make the Bruma blade trainer Rightwind blush. Provided he's not the only target left, Nels will discuss the guests you've already murdered. When asking about the fallen Dovesi Dran. Who could have done this? Who could have killed a sweet, innocent girl? Was it you? So help me if I find out you're the one who did this. Calm down. Why would we ask after her if we had anything to do with it? We're not a monster. I can't believe she's dead. Seeing her body lying there. It's like my poor daughter all over again. I'm sorry, Nels, about your daughter. I mean, Devesi. No, no. When I looked into Devesi's face, it was like peering at my own daughter. I... I feel like I've lost her all over again. He will respond about a dead Matilda Petit with low disposition. She's dead. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that now, would you? What kind of sick, demented person could cut down an old woman in cold blood? It proves that evil truly does exist in this world. The kind of killer that gets enjoyment out of slaughtering civilians, I'm sure. Some bloodthirsty monster killed that woman in cold blood. It's obvious to me one of the other guests killed her to eliminate the competition. Assuming that's true, who's next? You? Me? We need to keep our eyes open, friend, and we'd do well not to trust the others. If approaching Nell's about a fallen Neville and he isn't a fan... The man is dead, you horse's ass. There's nothing more to tell. Nothing more? What about where you were when he died? I may not have liked the man, but I'm particularly troubled by his death. Neville was a capable fighter. Who could have killed him? And so quickly? Yeah, not many. What are you trying to say? You want to know how I really feel about Neville's death? I'm afraid. I may hate the Imperial Legion, but its members are trained warriors. Neville was probably the most capable fighter among us, yet he was cut down silently, just a few rooms away. I fear one of us is not who they appear. This isn't the work of some greedy houseguest. There's an assassin among us. You mark my words. We must watch ourselves at every step. And with a dead young primo. The lad's dead, you uncaring fool. Now get away from me before you join him. Easy. You said it yourself. We need to stick together. That poor boy didn't deserve to die. He was rich. He had no business even being here, looking for treasure that might not even exist. You think the treasure isn't real? Why are we here then? Surely it's jealousy over gold. Primo being here made no sense. Whoever our host is, why would he invite someone who didn't even need the money? It's as if we were invited for another reason altogether. Think about it. We're trapped in this house with no way out, and now people start dying. I think poor Primo was tricked, just like the rest of us. If we're not careful, we'll end up dead too. 
You mark my words. If Nels had aided us at all in the killing of the guests, after the vol perished, he will congratulate. Ha ha ha! We did it, my friend! The killer is dead, and this nightmare is just about over. All we have to do now is find a way out of here. Leaving us to end the Nord's life and our leisure. Ha! Otherwise, if Nels is the only target alive, he may attack us after greeting him, depending on his disposition. A low disposition, Nets. By the gods, you're the only one left. It was you. How could you? How could you have killed all those people? <laughs> you won't take me so easily. After which, he'll attack, and we will fail the bonus. <laughs> Show me what you've got. <laughs> <laughs> With a normal disposition, however, he will simply refuse to talk. You. What do you want? If you're looking for something to drink, I can't help you. It's mine. It's all mine. It's the only thing I have. Staying true to his word, he begins gathering and consuming all the nearby liquor, and we await the Nord to fall into a promised stupor before using our bare hands to break his neck. <laughs> Interestingly, he's the only guest with a high disposition that will figure out that we've been manipulating him the entire time. As we say, it's over, Nels. It's just you and me now. Everything's gonna be okay. You wanna know something, my friend? I just don't care anymore. We're the only two left. I know I didn't kill those people, so that leaves you. And now... You're here to kill me, right? Ah, well, let's get this over with. So I guess this is it, then? Nels will then resume drinking at his seat among the fallen corpses of his fellow party guests, awaiting the inevitable. After the first guest has been eliminated, tensions rise, and the ex-Imperial soldier, Neville, will reflexively revert to his Legion training. I know someone's been murdered and we're all on edge. Just try to remain calm. I'll get to the bottom of this. He will then greet us according to his disposition. A low one will grant us. Someone's been killed, and as far as I'm concerned, you're one of the prime suspects. You watch your step. With a normal disposition, he correctly proclaims. Locked inside a house with five strangers. It sounded like a trap when I read the invitation. Looks like I was right. And with a high disposition. A guest has been murdered. So it begins. You mark my words, this entire party is a trap. Someone wants us all dead and now they have their chance. When you leave the conversation, Neville may remark. I knew this little party was too good to be true. Assuming the person we discuss still lives, Neville will have the following to say, starting with Dovesi Dran. I'm not sure I liked your line of questioning, friend. Someone's been killed. Show a little respect. You think that dark elf is going to be okay? Dovesi's upset by the murder, but she'll be okay. I get the sense she's seen worse things in her life. You don't seem too concerned about her well-being. Right now, my main concern is figuring out who the killer is. She may be young, but Devizi is a suspect just like everyone else. I've seen enough in my time to know that anyone is capable of murder if they have the right motivation. When asking after Matilda's fragile mindset, he scolds. She's upset, you idiot. Murder has that effect on people. Matilda did seem rather shaken. The poor woman's rather upset. Someone of her bearing isn't accustomed to the horror of murder. A noble woman of her bearing scared witless. She should probably stay close to a man of your skill set, no? She's afraid, and for good reason. If the killer strikes again, they may very well pick an easy target, like Matilde. She needn't worry, though. I'm a trained soldier, with 20 years of experience dealing with situations like this. On my honor, this killer will be caught and dealt with. When asking about Nels the Naughty... Someone's been killed. And you know what my real problem is? Trying to decide who did it, you or that worthless Nord. 
When people start turning up dead, it's usually a good idea to keep your eyes on any nearby Nords, if you understand what I'm saying. Believe me, I know exactly what you're saying. Nords are raised to be cold-blooded killers. Don't take your eyes off Nels if you value your life. I'll bet anything he's our murderer. And when slyly suggesting Primo Antonius was nowhere to be seen during the first elimination. I hope you're not suggesting that Primo was the murderer. I'm the trained investigator here. Just keep your mouth shut and stay out of my way. Fine. I'll stay out of your way. But I'm guessing you believe Primo is innocent in all of this, don't you? Well, when somebody gets murdered, everyone nearby could be considered a suspect. That includes young Primo. Oh? Includes Primo? To be honest, my instincts tell me the kid isn't the killer. Sure, he's a bit obnoxious, but that doesn't make him capable of murder. You'd be smart to stay with the rest of the group. It's just not safe to go wandering off alone with a killer on the loose. With a second guest dead, Neville, now believing the party is indeed a trap, initiates his own investigation of sorts in a futile attempt to take control of the spiraling situation. Neville will now greet us if he dislikes us. Well, well, look who's here. It's the number one suspect in a cold-blooded murder of two innocent people. I'm watching you, scum. Or if he is indeed indifferent to us. I'd say that with two people dead, it's time for everyone to pull together. We need to watch out for each other, stay in a group. If we greet him with a high disposition at this point, he'll say the following before he gets his gear. We're being stalked like animals in the forest. I'm still not sure if the killer is one of the other guests or is hiding somewhere in the house. One thing I do know is that the killer won't just stop with two. They never do. You and I, we need to watch each other's backs. I've got my old Legion armor and sword in a chest upstairs. It's time I geared up and showed this coward just who he's dealing with. Stay safe, if that's even possible. The Red Guard will then stalk his way upstairs, and his demeanor noticeably changes along with his garb. Don't worry, my friend. I'm going to show this slinking cutthroat how the Imperial Legion takes care of things. And when we leave the conversation, he may say... Don't get any ideas about wandering off alone. I'm keeping my eye on everyone, including you. When asking if Neville is worried about the young Dunma once more, he cautions. Why are you so concerned with my feelings toward a young dark elf girl? You wouldn't be so stupid as to try to turn me against her. Look, Davesi is clearly upset. I believe that. That girl's either upset that those people were killed, or she's an excellent actress. She's still a suspect as far as I'm concerned. If Nels is alive at this point, we can ask. So, between us, who do you think is the killer? You want my honest opinion? I think Nels is the killer. But I haven't yet ruled out that Davisi may be working with him. Or if Nels is dead, Neville, who do you believe is behind this? You want to know the truth? I thought for sure Nels was the killer. But with him dead... My bets are now on Davisi. When moving on to question Neville about Matilda Petit... Excuse me? You want to question me about Matilda? Two people have been murdered, you fool! Get your priorities straight! My priorities are my safety, first and foremost, thank you. I need to channel some of that energy into helping the frightened old Biddy. Matilda's old and frail. The shock of two people being murdered is surely too much for the poor woman. There's a killer in here. And Matilde needs protection. Who better to defend her but me? I'm keeping my eye on the old woman, don't you worry. If we share our common concerns about Nels the Naughty. Now this is interesting. Two people turn up dead, and you're more concerned with my feelings toward the Nord. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were trying to turn me against him to cover your own tracks. Why would we need to cover our tracks? The drunken Nord is doing an excellent job looking suspicious leering at everyone from the bottom of that mug of ale. <laughs> and especially at you. Two people are dead, and the only thing the Nord can do is dive into a bottle of beer. If you ask me, it's all an act. Nels killed those people, and pretty soon he'll come for the rest of it. Don't you worry. When I gather more evidence, I'll take that scum down. Primo may be young, but he looks strong. 
and I'm sure he could handle himself in a fight. I think I'm going to enlist his help. I'll talk to Primo. Give him a bit of encouragement. If he and I are vigilant, we may prevent the killer from claiming another victim. Don't go far. It's too dangerous to go wandering around this house. With only two targets left and three guests eliminated, there are now only two possible suspects left. The other guest and us. And as we round the second floor corner, we see the imposing figure of a fully armoured Neville looming over us at the top of the stairs to the third floor. With a low disposition, Neville will accuse. So many people dead. I just don't know who to trust anymore. Come to have a few words before you slip my throat? That's right. I know you did it. I can't prove it yet, but you mark my words. You're going down. Or with a neutral disposition. I've been doing some thinking about you. It's kind of interesting that you were the last guest to arrive, don't you think? And now three people lie dead and you look as if you haven't a care in the world. It just looks a bit suspicious. That's all I'm saying. With a high disposition and Nell's being dead, he'll greet us with... There you are. Listen, I've searched every inch of this house. It's sealed up tight. There's no way in or out, and there's nobody hiding any place. That means the killer has been inside with us all along. You and I aren't murderers, so that leaves one person. We must prepare to defend ourselves. This is insane. We're being hunted down one by one. There must be a way out of this madhouse. If Nels is the other guest still breathing and Neville has a high disposition towards us, we're given an opportunity to affect Neville's actions prematurely. There you are. Listen, I've searched every inch of this house. It's sealed up tight. There's no way in or out. And there's nobody hiding any place. That means the killer has been inside with us all along. You and I aren't murderers, so that leaves one person. It's Nels the Naughty. We can, as always, say nothing. Yes, well, I know how you feel. What words can really do justice to the terrible situation at hand? But we must stick together if we are to survive. Otherwise, flee, my friend. I'll confront Nels. You, You would do that for me? You are truly a good friend. Yes, I... I fear this is beyond even my ability. I'm not as young as I used to be. I'll take refuge in my room until Nels has been dealt with. Thank you, my friend, and good luck. Neville will then proceed to hide and attempt to sleep off the inevitable confrontation, though it is too difficult for him in his legion gear, leaving Nels for us. This house is a death trap. We're being killed off one by one. Or instead, we can goad him, saying... We must act now. Kill Nels. Yes, yes, we must kill that foul Nord before he slits our throats. Aye! Pursuing Nels, Neville trudges down the stairs, hitting the Nord square in the back with a terrible lick of lightning that sends the Nord sprawling. Ah! Otherwise, with varying disposition, we can approach Neville about the remaining guests before they too are dealt with. Starting with asking about Dovesi Dran with low disposition. Find it odd that so many people have been killed, yet the two of you still live. Looks to me like you two are working together. I find it odd you came to that conclusion when when Dovesi has actively been avoiding both of us the entire time. So, three of us left. You, Dovesi, and myself. The list of suspects is certainly getting smaller. With Nels dead, my eye is on Dovesi. Look... You believe in evidence, and I respect your methods, but in confidence, you were right about her. She's been harping on about how much she hates the Legion behind your back with a passion, and you said that yourself. I don't want to cast unfounded aspersions, but I saw her spell casting earlier, and I think, well, I think she may be a witch, and we've somehow fallen for her wicked trap. You've helped me come to my senses, friend. There's no time for evidence gathering, no time to collect proof. Devizi is the murderer. That little dark elf urchin killed three people in cold blood, and now she's going to try to kill us. We can't let that happen. Follow me, my friend, and watch my back. 
Davizi must be brought to justice, and I'm the one to do it. Let's go. Neville then barrels towards the Dark Elf, giving her a taste of their coveted destruction magicka. <laughs> Afterwards, provided he killed Dovesi Dran himself, we can discuss the murder, to which he'll show his unease regarding the killing of a child. She murdered all those innocent people, and I delivered justice, just like any Legion soldier would. I... only did what I thought was right. If Matilda Petit is one of the few left, and Neville isn't a fan of us... I suppose you're trying to turn me against Matilda, eh? Make me think she's the killer. I've got news for you, friend. I know it's you. I can't prove it yet. But just you wait. You try to hurt that poor old woman and I'll cut you in two. Why do you think we're here with you? To get to the bottom of this. Whoever this killer is, it's like... Like they're almost invisible. Three people have been killed. And now Mathilde thinks she's next. I guess only the killer knows for sure. Isn't that right? Okay, let's lay our cards on the table then, and you can see if you think I'm lying. I think the killer is an assassin. I feel they're somehow in our midst, and I don't know exactly why they are here, but I know it's a matter of time until more people die. You know I'm right. Three people have been killed, and the only ones left are you, me, and a little old lady. One of us is a murderer. And my money's on the old lady. Don't let her looks deceive you, friend. I've seen black widows like her before. Her crimes must not go unpunished. Justice is at hand. Unfortunately for Matilde, her only crime being in believing in the infallibility of the ex-imperial legionnaire. This house is a death trap. We're being killed off one by one. And if she is a final survivor with Neville, she will haphazardly sprint towards him, cowering for cover behind his authority. Neville, however, has no such compunction about tossing the old Breton aside like a wet rag. You and I are the only ones left. But we did it. We survived. We... We won! If we begin probing a final time about Nels the Naughty... I was positive he was the killer until you opened your mouth. Now I'm not so sure. My gut instincts tell me Nels is the killer. But still I lack the proof I need to confront him. Maybe you can convince me I'm right. Neville, listen. You want convincing? Remember your first encounter with the Nord. He was happy to openly berate you in front of everybody. He even hated you, even. And he's not the only Nord. Remember the Dorman, Fafnir? Clearly something underhanded is at play, and he's involved. This is a dirty Nord trap that we've fallen into. My friend, in talking to you, it's become clear what must be done. I have no doubt in my mind that Nels is the killer. We must take him down. We've got to kill that cold-loving bastard before he turns on us. You cover me while I strike the killing blow. The incensed ex-knight then catches Nels with a blow cracking his ribcage as the Nord senses the danger. <laughs> All too late. If we cross-examine Neville once more about Primo Antonius... I've come across your kind before. People get murdered and you ask questions. It's a sure sign of a killer with a guilty conscience. Watch yourself. Just tell me one thing. I know I keep coming back to it, but... Why would a noble lower himself by coming here? His motive for gold makes no sense. That's why the rest of us came, obviously. It's all starting to make sense now. Primo didn't need the money. He has more than any of us. Enough, in fact, to give away an entire chest of gold. That rich little bastard lured us all here by appealing to our greed. Don't you see? He considers us all low class and he wants us exterminated. 
That high-born little worm won't get away with this. He'll pay with his life. Come on, you watch my back. I'm going to take Primo down. Neville will then bound down the stairs as nimbly as any in a full curious and flings a fireball at the unsuspecting noble just missing him by inches, followed by a crunch of his mace to the back of poor Primo, who immediately crumples to the floor. Oh! Provided he's not the only target left, Neville will discuss the guest we've already murdered. When saying, Neville, Devacy's passing, it was... that was a tragedy. She was a child, and some sick murdering dog struck her down in cold blood. I swear, if I find out you did this, I'll kill you with my bare hands. Perhaps she made an enemy in here. Devacy couldn't have been any more than 15 years old. What threat could she have posed? Why was she murdered? Damn it, I mean to find out. I'm guessing you've seen things like this before. I was in the Legion for a great many years, my friend. I saw a lot of horrible things, including the murders of children. It made no sense then, it makes no sense now. But don't you worry. I vowed to bring Devizi's killer to justice. I've heard Matilda passed. Did you happen to see anything? Someone slaughtered that poor old woman like a lamb. I've got my eyes on you. Make one false move and I'll come down on you like a hammer. Where was she? She said she was going to stick close by you. How could this happen? How could I have let my guard down? That poor old woman is dead. And I should have protected her. You can't be everywhere at once. Matilde's murder saddens me, friend, but not for the reason you may think. Ten years ago, when I was in my prime, this never would have happened. But now I'm old, and my instincts have failed. I let that woman down. Neville will then share his true feelings on Nels the Naughty. One less Nord in the world is something I'd normally cheer about, but the fact that he was murdered by a fellow guest does put a damper on things. If only Nels is dead, he has unique dialogue saying. Can't say I'm sorry to see there's one less Nord in the world. Still, I don't appreciate someone getting murdered right under my nose. Well, it looks like you weren't a fan of the Nord. The good news, there are no more Nords left. Nels is dead. You know what that means? You've just shot to the top of my suspect list. You make one wrong move. And I'll break you. And if Primo Antonius dies? He was a young man and now he's dead. Slaughtered like a lamb. I've got my eyes on you, stranger. Don't you forget that. Why was Primo targeted, do you think? I'm still putting the pieces together. Was Primo murdered for his money? Was it something about the chest of gold? I'm not sure yet, but I'm close. You think he was taken unawares? Primo was a young man, strong and full of life. Surely he would have been able to defend himself against an attacker. If Neville's the only target left, and we've convinced him to attack the previous target, he'll now greet us with... You and I are the only ones left. But we did it. We survived. We, we won. Well, that's that. The killer is dead, and this nightmare is just about over. All we have to do now is find a way out of here. Otherwise, his disposition towards us will affect what happens next. Both a low disposition and a normal one will be proof enough for him to know that we are, in fact, the killer. And he will attack us after the appropriate you greeting. Did you killed them all. Well, here we both are. Retired Imperial Legion officer and hired assassin. So, who do you work for? The Dark Brotherhood? The Morag Tong? No matter. I've faced your kind before. You're a coward. You use stealth and lies to destroy innocent lives. All of that ends now. Prepare to meet your doom. Or... Oh. I was wondering when you'd get to me. I have to give you some credit. You had me fooled. You made me trust you, which is not an easy thing. Oh, and the chest of gold was a nice touch. I knew it was all too good to be true, but I guess my greed got the best of me. But I'm afraid your little game is over now. I've killed more assassins in my day than I can count, so let's get this over with. Die, damn you! Ha! The Red Guard then bounds at us, unleashing a devastating assault. 
What's the matter? I'm getting tired. Oh! Ah! So it's probably best we explore our final option. With a high disposition, we'll have the Red Guard believe in our innocence. Despite his conviction, there was no way for an assassin outside of the known group of people. Well, that's it, my friend. We're the last. And that damned assassin is still hiding out in this house somewhere. I guess there's only one thing left for me to do. I'm going to find an axe and do my best to chop that damn door down and get us out of here. So I guess this is it, then. And he'll go and grab an axe and proceed to attempt to break down the front door in vain. It should be noted, Neville wasn't lying about his prime being behind him, as, without any armour at least, he's basically helpless and boasts a pitiful 1 HP according to the wiki allowing us to lose but a single arrow to fell the ex-imperial. <laughs> While he remained blissfully ignorant of our crimes. Once a guest has been eliminated, the young noble becomes visibly rattled and more paranoid. Approaching him with a low disposition that's... What kind of party is this? Someone has been murdered! Get away from me, peasant. Someone has been murdered and I'm rather unnerved by the whole thing. A neutral disposition? Did you hear? Someone has been murdered. One of us. One of the guests. Or if Primo is fond of us, he confides... I'm beginning to get a bad feeling about all of this. I'd leave right now if I could. Well, the money means nothing to me. I just thought it would be fun. Wonderful. People are dropping dead and I'm trapped here looking for gold I don't even need. I'll be happy just to find the key and get out of here. Speaking to Primo about our fellow guests, to cast suspicion on the treasure seekers and of ourselves, we begin sowing seeds of doubt towards the dark elf Dovesi, his one-time crush, which we're sharply met with. My ears deceive me. Or are you actually suggesting Dovisi might be the one behind the murder? Back away now, Cretan! Behind? No. Affected by? Absolutely. She seems very upset by the murder. I do hope she'll be all right. Have you had time to console her? I can tell. The murder is weighing heavily on her heart. She seems such a paradox to me. So gentle and beautiful, yet so strong. In regards to the destitute noble Matilda Petit, he snaps. Is there something wrong with you? Someone has been murdered. My feelings about that old crone are hardly important right now. Feelings maybe, but you think Matilda will be okay? She seems rattled. Something tells me the murder of one of the guests isn't going to stop Matilda from searching for the money. She strikes me as the greedy type. Now that someone's been killed, Matilda may be a little frightened for her own safety, but she's still more concerned with finding the hidden gold. Matilda claims to be from one of the High Rock's most distinguished noble families, but I have a feeling their fortune has long been squandered. When beginning to insinuate about Nels the Naughty's guilt... Are you trying to insinuate that Nels might be the killer? Maybe I think you did it. After all, murder is a common crime of the lowborn. The Nord certainly is drinking his troubles away. Nell seems just as unnerved as the rest of us that someone has been killed, but he seems to find solace in a bottle. Before the body turned up, I got the sense that Nels was a bit of a drunkard. But he seems truly unnerved now and is drinking rather excessively. Oh, and casting suspicion at Neville... What are you getting at? Are you suggesting that Neville is the killer? Take your suspicion someplace else, you low-born worm. For a soldier, Neville seems quite... frazzled. I thought this would have been second nature to the Legion's quote-unquote finest. He seems on edge, doesn't he? 
I guess you can take the man out of the Legion, but you can never take the Legion out of the man. Neville seems different now that someone has been killed. More alert, more aware. Something tells me he's not going to take all of this lying down. He's a trained soldier after all. I bet if anyone can figure out what's going on here, it will be him. Wonderful. People are dropping dead and I'm trapped here looking for gold I don't even need. I'll be happy just to find the key and get out of here. After a second treasure seeker has been suddenly murdered, Primo's mood darkens further. With low disposition, he rebukes. Two people are dead, and for all I know, you could have killed them. Just leave me alone, you worthless peasant. A normal one? Two people are now dead. And for what? A trunk full of coins? How pathetic. Or if he holds us in high regard. Dear friend, have you heard? Two of the guests now lie dead. If I find out who did it, I may have to take matters into my own hands. Suggesting Dovesi Dran had something to do with the murder is met with. He's upset, you buffoon, just like the rest of us. Two people have been murdered. I hope you're not suggesting she could be the killer. I do know one thing. That dark elf shouldn't be here. The poor girl. She's too young, too innocent to be exposed to these horrible murders. I hope she's holding up all right. I don't mean to sound like a ghoul, but with two people murdered and Dovesi obviously upset, this may be my chance to get close to her. You know, offer her comfort and support during this difficult time. Besides, I want to watch over her, make sure she stays safe. Or attempting to subtly turn Primo against Matilda Petit. What are you doing? Trying to turn me against her? What's the matter? Trying to cover your tracks? Have you seen Matilda of late? Or is she still skulking around the basement? She seems frightened, like the rest of us. I bet now she's regretting ever stepping foot in this house, gold or no. Regret or no, she sure seems to want to look out for you. I guess it's the nobility calling to one another. The more people that drop dead, the more annoying Matilda becomes. She keeps watching over me like some kind of worried grandmother. If the killer strikes again, maybe they'll do me a favor and take her out next. When questioning Primo about Nels the Naughty... Damn it, man. Two people are dead. Have you nothing better to do than question me about the Nord? Nels been up to... He's drinking even more than he was before. Is it because he's afraid? Or feeling guilty? To be honest, I'm not sure if I trust him. He's a hard drinker, but there's something more. Something in his eyes. Hard and calculating. Or when looking for information about the ex-soldier Neville. Look, I don't know what kind of information you're after, but I won't help you. Just go away. Neville certainly seems right at home with his investigation, if you catch my meaning. Seems that with each murder, Neville becomes that much more aware. If I didn't know better, I'd say he's planning on catching the killer himself. Unless he was behind this, no? Well, Neville is a trained soldier. He was in the Imperial Legion for twenty years or so, I've heard. He certainly knows how to kill. Still, I don't think he's the murderer, no. Quite the contrary. I think he takes the murders personally. Feels he should have protected the victims. Don't go far. It's too dangerous to go wandering around this house. Post the third death of the party goers, Primo becomes accusatory and bears his hostility openly, especially if he doesn't like us accusing. You're still alive. For all I know, you're the killer. You stand your ground, or so help me there'll be blood between us. With a normal disposition? Three people now dead, and yet the two of us still live. Do you think I'm the killer? Because I most certainly wonder the same thing about you. Or if we are in the noble's good graces. Dear friend, three of the guests have been killed. You and I, we must stay close, band together for mutual protection. This is insane. We're being hunted down one by one. There must be a way out of this madhouse. If we dare outright suggest Dovesi is the murderer. You fiend. Are you suggesting Dovesi is the murderer? You'd do well to watch your mouth and your back. 
Why is Dovesi still alive is all I want to know. Dovesi is young and weak, yet the killer left her alive. Why? She couldn't possibly have anything to do with the murders. Could she? Primo, I've seen her spell cast when no one was looking. She's a dark elf savage and has been trying to trick you. How could I have been so naive? So stupid! We must stick together, my friend, for Dovisi is surely the murderer. We must strike before she does. Primo then dashes for a nearby sword, as Dovesi, sensing imminent danger, serendipitously confirms her accusation, conjuring a scamp as Primo darts after his former crush and slashes at her recklessly, <gasps> killing the poor girl too stunned to fully defend herself. After the dark deed is done, Primo will then regain his composure and exasperates. It's, it's finally over. The killer is dead. We just... we just need to get out of here. To think. I actually had feelings for that wretched witch. And thank the God she's dead. Now, now we're safe. We're safe. Aren't we? Or, if we insinuate, it was in fact Matilda Petite. What? Are you telling me Matilda is the killer? I don't know what to believe. You just stay away from me. But there's one thing bothering me. Matilda's obsession with gold. At first, I thought Matilda was just a cloying old hag, but now I realize she could be the killer. It's her. Don't you see? She's the only one left. The only one left alive. We've got to get her before she can get us. Do you understand? We then follow Primo as he rummages around upstairs for a weapon. So many people dead. I just don't know who to trust anymore. Settling instead on his fist as he floors the brittle Breton with an overhead right. <gasps> the blow apparently killing her instantly. You and I are the only ones left. But we did it. We survived. We... we won. If we instead attempt to cast blame on Nels the Naughty. You want me to think Nels is the killer, is that it? Maybe you did it, eh? Maybe you're just trying to turn me against him. What do you think about Nels? He shifted from this affable drunk to something more dangerous. I just don't know what to think. I had my doubts about Nels and he is still alive. Could it be true? Could he have killed all of them? He has the strength, and that deranged Nord Dorman was a little too eager to usher us inside. You think this is all a ruse to get at your money? I was right about him. He's been doing it. He's the killer. My friend, you and I have to end this. We must kill Nels before he kills us. Primo then locates the nearby sword and, to his credit, waits for a distracted and drunk Nels to face him before cutting the man down. We then attempt our final besmirching of the legionnaire named Neville. What are you saying? That Neville is the killer? Why should I trust a low-born dog like you? Get away from me! You know, I saw Neville get a bit rough with his interrogation of that poor Devacy before. Well, no wonder she hated him. I'm sorry. I... I thought he was hunting the killer. Now... I don't know what to think. I don't trust him. Or you. Stay away from me. Do something. And what? We separate? Then Neville takes us aside for his own special interrogations. No thanks. I was wrong. Don't you see? I thought Neville was trying to catch the killer, but he is the killer. We need to find a way out of here. Neville beats the younger man to the sword. Where are you going? What are you doing? We need to keep our eyes on each other. Yeah, but Primo, in his prime, easily bashes the old red guard over the rail to fall to his death on the floor below. Provided he's not the only target left, Primo will discuss the guests that we've already murdered, asking if he misses Dovesi will have him threaten. You're not even worthy to mention her name, you low-born parasite. Now get away from me before you wind up dead. That dark elf. She really was a sweet girl. She was so beautiful. And now she's gone. 
It seems so. Senseless. Who? Who among us is vile enough to take the life of such a beautiful, precious creature? If I find out who did this, they will pay with their life! If we instead say, you did say you'd be happy to be rid of old Matilde. No, I didn't really care for her, you commoner scum. But I never wanted anything like this to happen to her. She certainly made a lot of enemies in a short time, but that doesn't justify how she was butchered. The old woman is dead. Murdered. Cut down in this very house. But why? Did she find the gold? And someone wanted it for their own? Between you and me, I think Matilda found the gold. And one of the others killed her for it. Maybe that means the rest of us are safe. If that's the case, then the killer got what he was after. The rest of us needn't worry about our own safety. So, Nels the Naughty found the bottom of his mug, eh? He's dead. And one of us killed him. Maybe it was you, eh? Maybe he found the gold and you murdered him for it. It didn't seem like he did much except drink and infuriate the Red Guard. Someone killed the man. But who? And for what reason? We may never know. Do you have any ideas? I was thinking, maybe Nels found the chest of gold and one of the others killed him for it. We've got to be careful, my friend, or we could be next. And finally, if we ask, what happened to Neville? He's dead, you peasant. There's nothing more to tell. What does this mean for us? Neville was strong. A soldier. If he was murdered, this does not bode well for the rest of us. My friend, I am truly worried. Neville was a strong and capable man, a soldier of twenty years. The rest of us will be easy prey for the killer now. After all the guests have been killed, if Primo himself had murdered a guest previously, he will greet. It's... it's finally over. The killer is dead. We just... we just need to get out of here. Otherwise, with his hands clean and a low disposition towards us, he divines. You. You murdering dog. How could you have killed all those people? For the gold. Is that it, you filthy peasant? Primo will find the closest sword and begin swinging at us. <laughs> However, with a neutral disposition... I... I don't understand. You're the only one left. Why weren't you killed? No. No, it can't be. We take away Primo's sword prematurely this time and contend with him, mano a mano, with our fists. What's that? And finally, with a high disposition, Primo will believe that we are not alone. Listen to me. The others, they're all dead. Someone has been coming in here and killing them. That means there must be a way out. So, I guess this is it then. As the noble nervously flits about checking different areas of the house, we casually snipe Primo and watch his body comically ragdoll for our amusement and convulse midair. Our quest and updates reading, All of the guests are dead, and no one knew I was the killer. I must now return to the sanctuary and speak with Ochiva to receive my reward and bonus. After murdering each guest successfully, we looked to leave the manor unnoticed and thoughtfully don the downed Neville's imperial armor to hopefully dissuade any locals from questioning us and successfully exit Skingrad via its gate, making our long journey back to Chaden Hall. Apologies for breaking off from the main video for just a moment before we see Ochiever about our bonus. But I would be remiss if I didn't give a massive thank you to the unofficial Elder Scrolls page. This video couldn't be possible without the wiki's in-depth breakdown painstakingly cataloging the dozens of options for the entire quest and party guests in minute detail. And so we resumed the quest and arriving back at the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary, Achiever greets us to share details of our reward and bonus for successfully fulfilling the contract's terms. Well done. Not only did you kill the five guests, you acted as an agent of terror and grief. You have earned your reward and bonus, assassin. I lay upon you now the Night Mother's blessing 
May she walk with you always and guide your hand as you act in accordance with the five tenets. Oh, you must mean the orphanage contract. Well, it's true. The children actually try to defend themselves. <laughs> Poor dears. <laughs> I'm just glad to know you came out of it all unscathed. Not that I doubted your abilities, but you know me. I worry. Right. Well, my contracts await. Maybe we can talk some more later. Sithis be with you, brother. So good to see you. Is there anything you need? <laughs> 